here and welcome back again to another episode of the Nurburgring Norch Live. Today guys we have the Lotus Type 56 which is a vintage Indy car powered by a gas turbine engine. Now a gas turbine engine is kind of like a jet engine although it has slightly less propulsion power. Um, so this thing is producing 500 brake horsepower, has roughly a top speed of 200 miles an hour and it will do 0 to 100 in 5.5 seconds uh, it takes a little while for it to reach those speeds because it only has one gear and it's vice versa for it to slow in down as well because you can't engine brake uh, especially changing down gear to try and get the car turned in uh, before the turn so you have to brake quite early with this thing now back in the day this thing was pretty much an engineering marvel powered by a gas turbine engine producing 500 brake horsepower and this thing is four wheel drive as well so literally literally ahead of its time back then and on its debut race it was literally dominating that race until at the end of the race it had a mechanical failure which resulted in this car retiring so hopefully we can give it a nice send off here guys around the Nürburgring Nordsch Live to see what time this thing can actually do so here we go guys and let's take it to Nürburgring Right, so here you are guys, ready to begin our hot lap with the Lotus Type 56 around the Nürburgring Green Nord Life. We are using the default stable setup, stable circuit setup with 9 litres of fuel. Unfortunately, the game doesn't allow you to quite put 10 litres of fuel, which has jumped from 9 to 12, so you have 9 instead. So here you go guys, let's build up some of the revs now and engage first gear and away we go. Just look at that acceleration straight off the bat, they just don't expect this thing to accelerate so much. It will be only more ferocious if we have reached the red line there or the limiter as we break already nice and early into turn one and don't have to worry about being careful on the way up because the four wheel drive system definitely does help with uh, the power or putting the power down but it does not help going around the bend it just the car really just understands so much and the brakes on this thing are absolutely horrible they're very small guys and this thing always accelerates even if your foot is not on the uh, throttle it will still accelerate and it's really just a weird sensation feeling uh, to have a car that constantly accelerates and because uh, the brakes don't really do much work at all so you definitely have to brake very very early into each of the bends and it's uh it's not really that good feeling as we go down to the uh, to the flyover now we're gauging the power and almost reaching 150 miles now as we get really airborne there and going down to the right hand kinks here for the little back straight as to see how fast we can get this car going and i would say the car's optimal range is between uh, so it starts from like 140 miles an hour that's when the car really just wants to pick up a lot of speed and just wants to climb so much speed as we almost reach 180 miles an hour braking already into left hand kink and down into the hairpin for the Foxhall car's going a little bit sideways there but that's fine and braking nice and early and keeping the speed and momentum going around down to the Foxhall now so let's see how fast this thing can climb speed going downhill already 140 miles an hour 150 miles an hour, 160 miles an hour there and Jesus Christ this thing just wants to accelerate constantly as we get a little bit out of shape there going through here a little bit wide, sideways as well. Everything's all happening all at once, but we managed to control it nice and gently there. We're going a little bit wide through the chicane and back on the power. So definitely managing the brakes is definitely one of the most crucial parts and aspects of uh, driving the Type 56. And a little backstory of, of this car as well. On its debut race in Indy 500, it was actually leading the race. Uh, by a country mile. Unfortunately at the end of the race, uh, coming up to the end of the race actually, uh, the car suffered a mechanical issue and resulted in the car's retirement. So unfortunately then the regulations changed and it was never raced again until like uh, you know hill climbs and special events or special events like that, uh, historical events, but never fully raced again. Uh, so really a sad story for this car because it was such an engineering marvel when the uh, Back and so much ahead of any other car really uh, during its time. Four wheel drive, gas turbine engine, you know, who would have thought that would have been, uh, been possible back in those days? So, yeah, hopefully, we can do a little tribute this time around or around the Nord Live for this uh, Type 56 to get a nice little send off as we go uphill now. So, this part of the track, I don't think this car will struggle here going uphill because uh, the engine has a lot of torque, I'd say. And I don't think gravity will phase it so much as you go down into the hairpin for the hill straight here. So braking already there, nice and early to get the car turned in right. 
um, back on the power so this is where the hill climb really catches that most cars off uh, uh, off and they lose a lot of speed here because they just cannot reach their optimal RPMs or speed because they lack the necessary torque to do so this thing as you guys can see it's not that it's not going to be a problem for it because it just wants to keep going as we go a little bit on the grass there so I uh, couldn't really get off the grass as the Fatima was fighting me very part, bumpy part of the track as we break already for the left hand kink here which is a very very part a very hard part to get uh, well very easy part to get wrong as we go down to the hairpin for the carousel now the carousel is going to be quite a tricky part again for this car I think because where the car just wants to accelerate gonna have to keep tapping uh, tapping the brakes a little bit just to keep the car in check and in the line we want it to uh, to be on it's back already nice and early for the carousel and just really just gently tapping the brakes here and there and we're back on the power towards going up towards my favorite part of the track it's gonna be quite rewarding to get everything done right especially with this car uh, so let's see how well we do with a uh, constant accelerating gas turbine powered engine car <laughs> uh, vintage F1, uh, sorry, Indy car let's go around here nice and easy going a little bit wide onto the curves, a little bit sideways as well back end stepping out there but that's fine, managed to control the slide there a little bit of a scare but whew, it worked out well then got the car turned in right as we go around the little s bends here car's already picking up some speed I'm lifting off so much already not really putting my foot down around here and the car just constantly accelerates uh, so it's a very weird sensation feeling where the car just constantly wants to accelerate this literally has a mind of its own just like I need speed give me more speed literally that's what the car is saying let's go around here and we're going to be approaching a very bumpy part of the track uh, so let's see how well the uh, the Type 56 can handle around here it's gone a little bit wide into there but that's fine can really do much with brakes so early anyways but just there's no stopping power whatsoever from the brakes as we break already for the right hand kink here and this is where things will probably get a little bit tricky so we're gonna have to take this nice and cautious around here very slowly lifting off already although it's not gonna stop the car so much so lifting current continuing to lift off a little bit the cars getting quite squirmy there but we're meant to uh, keep it in a straight line as we break already for the right hand bend here and down to mini carousel we go and we're almost there at the back straight there uh, so let's see what this thing and how fast this thing can really reach speeds uh, going into mini carousel nice and easy through here it's quite bumpy and the vintage uh, cars don't really have the best suspensions if I'm honest right hand bend once again uh, just before the, uh, the back straight a little bit out of shape there, going a little bit wide, but I had to break there a little bit to keep the car in check and on the power we accelerate. So just look how fast now on the top uh, bottom sorry bottom right this thing is gonna climb speed. Already 160 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour. Can we reach 190? Uh, yep, yeah, 180 there. God, we can probably get 190 suspension bouncing all over the place. Then it was pretty much fighting me to keep it in a straight line. You can see I'm having to uh, adjust it a little bit here and there as we go oh, a lot of speed there going a little bit wide as we have the brake already nice and early through here there's just no turning ability when we reach those speeds at all with this car still getting a little bit too fast for this bend here as we go around managed to brake just in a nick of time and go around the final right hand bend around we go towards the start and finishing line what's it gonna be what's this car time gonna be it's gonna be one sorry 17 7 minutes 16 seconds point six two zero Whew. that was an absolute handful guys I really cannot stress how hard it is to drive this car but nevertheless a really good lap time for a uh, a car that really did not uh, didn't get its fame that it deserved uh, if you guys want to check out the leaderboard times be sure to check out the links down in the description box it will be the first link there and if you guys want to maybe even do your own laps here and there post down some links in the comments as well and post what times you got with this car with the default stable setup uh, but that's it for me guys so you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll be uh, I'll catch you guys in my next video so take care on and peace out